think it's hard to find somebody who doesn't know Christ at all, but I think they know a version. Um, there's no reason to circle the wagons and like keep it only in the context of the Christian space. I think the show is doing that. It's injecting some imagination into, um, into all of these stories. It doesn't matter whether or not it's, whether or not it's factually accurate or whatever. Now, I hate to be the bearer of bad news here, but if what I'm about to share with you doesn't shock you, then I think you love The Chosen more than you love your Bible. Trust me, you're not gonna wanna miss what I have to show you in this interview. And stick around until the end where I reveal some disturbing information about the composers and where the music for The Chosen is actually made. Howdy y'all, I'm Brylan, and in today's video, I wanna show you some clips from an interview that the Christian Post recently did with Dan Hazeltine of Jars of Clay and Matthew Nelson. Uh, they're the composers for The Chosen Show. And they're the ones that make all the music for the show The Chosen. Now we've made videos on this channel that have talked about some of the background of The Chosen and who Dallas Jenkins and just the people who create The Chosen have surrounded themselves with and how a lot of it doesn't really make sense when it comes to making a show about Jesus. There's a lot of influence going on behind the scenes that are really quite concerning. And I think this is another area of concern here. The, 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 the two men that are making the music for the show The Chosen don't even believe in the Bible. They might claim to believe in certain aspects of Christianity, but when it comes down to it, you'll see that they've created God in the image of self. Real quick, I want to take a few seconds and tell you about today's sponsor. It's the Daily Grace Company. What a wonderful company this is. If you need Bible study tools, journals, books and guides, prayer cards, Bibles, as well as highlighters, all kinds of things to grow in your relationship with the Lord, then check out our link in the description below. When you use our link, it helps this channel out. We would really appreciate it. Also, would you mind hitting that subscribe button and being a part of this community with us? We would absolutely love that. And hit that thumbs up button as well so YouTube can push this video out to more people. I'd really appreciate it. So let's jump into some of the concerning things that I saw in this interview done with Dan Hazeltine of Jars of Clay and Matthew Nelson. They are, again, the, the, the composers of The Chosen. They create all the music. And they had some very concerning things to say about the way the show is made and about Jesus. He was making a Christian kind of high school football movie. Like I think most Christian filmmakers have to do at least one of those. It's a rite of passage. And I kept trying to push him away from the like the the christian music um space for f music in the show dan i'm curious why were you trying to push dallas away from the christian music space oh uh, for that it was just more a matter of authenticity mm -hmm. uh it was you know at that time in the year 2000 in the year 2000 um the music that was happening in in the christian space was um you know it it, it didn't fit the film. Um, he needed music that was more connected to the Delta Blues. Or, you know, groups like the Rolling Stones who are, um, have a lot of really great blues elements in their music. I really wanted to push that angle for him. Um, there's no reason to circle the wagons and like keep it only in the context of the Christian space. Oh no, that's actually a great idea to use the Rolling Stones because you know a lot of people know about the Rolling Stones and I think a lot of non-Christians were looking for a good Christian high school football movie. So when they watch that movie and see the Rolling Stones, I think they'll be able to relate a lot more with it. Oh my! He points towards the Rolling Stones because of some blues elements in their music. You look at their music, Sympathy for the Devil, their Satanic Majesties. And this is the type of music that will help relate to people better. It doesn't have to all be in the realm of Christianity because that would be boring. 
Well, why do you think The Chosen? It has universal appeal. You talked about that. I mean, it's not just Christian audiences. It's mainstream audiences. People that don't know Christ at all are loving this show. Mm -hmm. What is driving this? Yeah, I, I mean, I think, I think it's hard to find somebody who doesn't know Christ at all. Um, but I think they know a version of religion or a version of faith. I think it's hard to find somebody who doesn't know Christ at all because of they have some sort of knowledge of religion or whatever they believe, whatever they worship gives them some sort of knowledge of Christ. So therefore their heart is, you know, ready to watch this show and see the, the, the you know, the real Christ that they, that they already know. That's not how any of this works. The Bible's very clear that a lot of people don't know Christ. In fact, most people will never know Christ and it's going to cause eternal separation from God for eternity. That should break your heart. We can't play these games where we're saying everybody has uh, knows Christ. The only way to truly know Jesus Christ is to be in the Word of God, to be in your Bible, to read your Bible, and to know the Christ of Scripture. And remember, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. This has nothing to do with other religions. If you don't know the God of the Bible, if you don't know Jesus Christ out of the Bible, then you don't know Christ at all. Um, I think the stories we tell about Jesus are not very compelling. Um, yeah. and, and so I think when they see this version of Jesus portrayed... A version of Jesus... What on earth does that even mean? Why are we playing these games about having a version of Jesus? I think it really does. It, it matters that he's merciful, that he's, he's extending a lot of grace. Um, he has his own flaws in a human way. Like He's very relatable and, um, and gracious, and I think people need to see that, mm -hmm. that side of... Jesus, because we've a lot of us have been force fed, um, you know, a, a version of Jesus that only cares about our behaviors. Mm -hmm. um, and then he goes on to make it about it being a, a relatable Christ that, you know, as if you can't relate to the to the to the God of the Bible. There's a big red flag here saying that you need this show in order to make Jesus relatable. Jesus has his own flaws. Last time I checked. Jesus was the sinless, perfect Son of God. Jesus was sinless. Jesus was perfect. That's why he was the ultimate sacrifice to appease God's wrath on our behalf. In the Old Testament, they had to bring a spotless animal, one without blemish, that was as close to perfect as they could get in order to sacrifice it at the altar to appease the wrath of God. After Jesus, that all went away because Jesus was the ultimate, perfect, spotless sacrifice who gave his life in our stead. Jesus didn't have any flaws. Scripture does show us in Hebrews 4.15, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Jesus was without sin. He was without blemish. He was without flaws. If, if people have a, an experience in the church, most often it's something that is focused on their behavior and not on their, their heart and their soul and their actual intrinsic value. And so I think this Jesus portrays that in a way that, that gives people something to connect with. Now what you're seeing here is he's saying that in the church, that we shouldn't make it about behavior. Now, works do not get you to heaven. Works do not give you salvation. It is by faith alone in Jesus Christ. And it is by our faith in Jesus, by us being redeemed in Jesus Christ, that we will want to keep God's commandments. It is not by following the commandments that gives us salvation, but when we have salvation in Jesus, we want to keep the commandments of God. Now, what Dan is saying here is that it's based too much on behavior, behavior, behavior. 
And it's not about who you are intrinsically on the inside in your soul. Now, Dan is an activist, self-proclaimed activist. And you can look up on his social medias. He is a trans activist, an LGBT activist. And he even said that he didn't care about what scripture had to say about what is wrong. And that it's more about how people feel. And so this is somebody that doesn't hold any respect for the word of God, who doesn't believe in what the Bible has to say. And he's creating the music for the chosen. And again, he's making such an emphasis about who we are on the inside because it's all about who you feel you are, who you think you are on the inside that matters. It's not about how you behave. It's not about, this sounds like Gnosticism to me. And again, listen to the verbiage that's said here. Words matter. This Jesus gives people something to connect to. This Jesus does. Not the Jesus of the Bible, but this Jesus that's being portrayed. Now watch this next clip about Matthew talking about the creators of the show taking liberties with imagination. The show is injecting imagination. Jesus injected imagination and his stories into the people who heard them about reimagining what it's like to directly experience the divine. So the creators of the chosen just got to use their imagination. Like Jesus did. Jesus just used his imagination when he was telling stories. As if the creators of the chosen, because they're making a show about Jesus, get to be on the same level as Jesus in some way and start to create imaginative concepts of what this should have been about or what this could have been about or what? Jesus didn't just wildly use his imagination when he was telling stories. A lot of times they were parables meant to make you genuinely really think. And a lot of times the people around him that were hearing these parables were like, what? I, I, don't, I don't get it. Tell us what that means. And this is an issue is that you do see a lot of imagination put into the characters, into Jesus, into the surround. You, you just see a lot of the interpretation of these creators adding what they think and what they feel would help people connect better to these characters outside of what the Bible actually tells us. Red flag. No, don't do that. I think the show is doing that. It's injecting some imagination into... Um, into all of these stories that I've grown up all my life knowing these stories and somehow watching The Chosen is um, almost like I've never I've never heard this story before. Mm-hmm. And the way the characters are portrayed, Matthew um, being portrayed as on the spectrum in some way. And um, it's just all this beautiful creativity. So Matthew is saying that he's heard all these stories before, but it's not until now that he sees them in The Chosen that now he can relate to them because of the imagination of the creators, not because of the fact that Jesus was and is the I am, because Jesus was and is fully God. There is no other that is more relatable than Jesus Christ. And because he isn't relatable to you, it's because you haven't really opened your heart to Jesus. And then you have here that the, they're making Matthew out to be like he's on the spectrum, like he has autism. You're just, you're literally creating fabled stories and fabled characters. You're creating characters to fit a Bible narrative so that you can have diversity and inclusion and all this other stuff within the story so it can be more relatable to everybody. There's plenty of stories in the Bible where it talks about those with infirmities coming to Jesus and trusting in Jesus no matter what. But yet we have to change the canon of the Bible. We have to change the actual characters within the Bible in order to make them more relatable. That's 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 heretical thing. That that that's heretical stuff. Please show me one place where it talks about Matthew being on the spectrum. That doesn't take um it's it doesn't matter whether or not it's whether or not it's factually accurate that Matthew was on the spectrum or not or whatever. It's plausible. But seeing Matthew portrayed that way is um, has brought so much beauty into um, 
so many people have responded to um, Matthew's character in particular, but a lot of the others as well. Yeah. I think this sums it all up. It doesn't matter whether it's factual or not. It's it it could have been, so it is. Because when you start creating characters that you have to relate to, when you start creating characters and start changing the characters of the Bible, start changing the people in the Bible so that you can better see yourself in them, then you're, you're more concerned about yourself than you are of Jesus. You're creating a me-centered gospel and you're creating God in the image of self. This is all universalism here. Now, I want to show you something. This is the studio where the chosen music is composed, okay? This is in, it's called Zen Space Music. This is Matthew's studio. And they compose the music for the chosen in Zen Space Music Studio. This is insanity, if you look at this. Oh, here's a quote on Zen Space. The Zen gardener is not interfering with nature because he is nature. And he cultivates as if not cultivating. Thus, the garden is at once highly artificial and extremely natural. This is a quote by Alan Watts, who was a 20th century Buddhist. He brought, he was, he, he's, he's known, he's well known for bringing Eastern mysticism and, and Buddhist and Tao, you know, Taoist beliefs, these Eastern religions, making them popular in the Western culture like in the United States, he is, it's absolutely demonic. And check out a few of these posts from Matthew's Instagram. This is somebody that does not love God. Not the God of the Bible. Maybe the God of self, but not the God, the one true God of the Bible. This is extremely sad to see. And again, these are two men that have a lot of issues with the Bible. They have a lot of issues with Jesus. And like Dan Hazeltine even said, I don't care about what the Bible says. I care about how people feel. So when you mix the fact that Dan is an LGBT activist, he doesn't care about what the Bible says about uh, the natural order of things. He is a human activist above God. And Matthew is obviously a universalist he very much uh, you know is into the eastern mysticism religions he you know meditating and just making a fool of god and uh, having buddhist statues uh, around his and honestly this is just another reason to be weary of the chosen so hey let me know your thoughts in the comments below i would love to hear what you think about all this and uh, I would love to have a conversation with you about it as well in the comment section below. And hit that thumbs up button, like this video, it help YouTube push it out to more people. And hit that subscribe button as well so that you can join this community. We upload content almost every single day and as well as two live streams a week. All right, I look forward to hearing from you in the next video.